Hello and welcome to Spindle TV. How are you guys and girls doing tonight? My name is Laney Shaughnessy. If you're new here, I'll be your host for the evening. And tonight kind of bookmarks a new era <laughs> in Spindle TV, turning a new leaf or what have you. Um, we are going to um, approach our classes a little bit differently starting this evening. Uh, we're going to make them more digestible and easy to follow. Um, we may be able to start getting back to more frequent, but right now we're just going to make them more digestible. So uh, we're, you, from this point on, you're not going to see three or four hour long classes. Um, we're going to be... Uh, trying to, hey, David Gatton, how you doing? We're gonna be trying to um, keep these uh, short to the point and informative. Uh, when I mean short, I don't mean super short. They're probably gonna be about 45 minutes, hour at the most, uh, but um, we're gonna uh, cut it off there. If something has to go into multiple parts, it has to go into multiple parts, but I'm gonna make sure that we can complete what we're starting in one, video without multiple parts uh, and it if it is something that's going to be multiple parts you will know ahead of time so you're not left hanging until the next class right so we're going to try to uh, uh, be better right i'm going to try to be better uh, your time is valuable to you my time is valuable to me and um, uh, i think it's going to be easier to go to certain videos and watch them and all and and not have to filter through, you know, four hour videos or three hour videos or two hour videos and things like that. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, tonight's class is, and you're gonna see how uh, simple and straightforward it is to make some pretty cool signs. I call them state pride signs. Uh, I've got a bunch of vector files for you uh, that I'm gonna give to you and um, uh, that's gonna help you with these. And then, of course, you can do other things with them. We're going to talk about that stuff as well. Um, and the uh, the um, projects themselves, anyone can do. And it could be a great project with new wood, reclaimed wood, pallet wood, just scrap wood and anything like that. So, And it's a low-cost, high-profit type item that would sell. So all of those things are, you know, uh, great. And that's what we're going to get into. So, um, no, Dave, you won't need to pack a lunch any longer. Uh, we're going to, we're going to stay on track and everything. Uh, now I want to say something last class, we did these kind of, uh, low cost, high profit, uh, uh, toilet paper organizers and holders and everything. Uh, the files for those projects, uh, are not live yet for you to download. Uh, they will be as of tomorrow. Um, I had we had went through that class and it was running long and stuff and everything. But we went through that class and there was one project I didn't get to show you, which was uh, you know uh, kind of one of the cooler projects and all. But you're gonna have all the files for all the projects and everything ready to download for those that you can make those as well too. And uh, those those all those files and everything they should be live tomorrow. Uh, as far as tonight's class files, as soon as the class ends, within about an hour after the class ends, you'll have you'll be able to have the link inside of the description of this video to download as well to all the state outlines and everything we're going to talk about. All right, so um, uh, I want to welcome Dave Gatton. Thanks for taking the time to come out and hang out with me. Kevin, Ronnie, David uh, Heineck, uh, Ronnie Probert, Kevin Wilkerson, Troy, John, Doug. Uh, Dave, Brooke, everybody, right? If I didn't mention your name, it didn't mean I didn't forget. Brooks Martin, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Dave Krause, good to see you. Roger Brown and uh, Riley Wood. Hey, what's happening, man? Um, but uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, let's hope it's a good class. Hopefully, you find something enjoyable enjoy about it. We're going to learn some new tips and tricks. We're going to talk about optimizing some tool paths and stuff along the way. And with that being said, let's jump over to the program. Okay? So... Uh, Let's uh, let's see. I am on that channel is channel number two, and let's this time we're not going to have my big old head in the way. Uh, let's get me down in the bottom left corner. Last week was a fiasco because I taught about 
20 to 30 minutes of the class with me blocking the view um, and all that wonderful jazz. Now, what you're going to see on the screen, just wanted to kind of, you know, some of you are visual right out of the gate, right? You want to kind of get an idea of what we're talking about and stuff. And um, this is an example of some reclaimed pallet wood, right? Um, you know, edge glued together. And uh, we've got different state outlines that we cut. And we also, you know, cut an American flag into it as well, too, just to... Um, uh, give it a little bit of uh, pizzazz. Now, I don't think, me personally, I don't think if I were uh, doing this, I don't think I would color in the stripes um, or the stars and everything if I was using a kind of real pretty kind of reclaimed wood and stuff, but I might, I'm not sure. Um, what I mean by that is imagine on this sign here, uh, if I came in, I'm gonna add some color to this. And I'm gonna just, I'll go kind of a dark color, right? Just to, so you can visually understand what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna add, let's make it black for right this second. Popping through. And I'll just do the state of Georgia for right now. But, you know, so I'm not sure, I, I may, May not, I don't know, but uh, uh, add color to it if it was a pretty reclaimed wood. But also, if I didn't add color to it, it might not stand out or pop as much. You know what I mean? The stars and stuff. Um, so uh, that being said, that would be you have to kind of on an ongoing basis. Now, if this was just plain wood uh, or something, uh, and it wasn't, you know, kind of a reclaimed, really, you know, like a uh, spalted type of wood or something like that, you know, aged uh, and distressed and stuff. If it was just a new, you know, project, I'd probably paint it, you know, and, and the stripes and the stars and all. If it was, um, if it was reclaimed and it had some really good colors and stuff to the wood already, I'd probably just leave it natural, kind of just kind of like a, uh, you know, a farmhouse type, uh, you know, uh, sign and stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, Bear Gruber, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully, everybody else has as well too, watching my videos. Um, but the uh, so it really, as far as the finish, it really comes to you. But I want you to think about this. You know, um, a lot of times we have cutoffs in our, uh, you know, from other projects and stuff that that probably end up at some point in time going to the scrap bin and all. But a decent size, uh, you know, uh, pieces and everything. If I were to reset this uh, back to a blank board, right? Just kind of an example here. Um, you know, scrap pieces and everything that could be kind of somewhat edge glued together uh, to create a very unique canvas. Uh, you know, uh, we could... Um, pretty much uh, eliminate scraps and, and, and really come out uh, with some uh, really cool things out of them, right? And, and everything. Now this background, this is just uh, basically, if we look at my backgrounds here, it's a, it's a weathered pallet wood uh, scaled background off of Google, you know, that was imported in uh, just to kind of give that visual example. You know, um, but any scrap pieces, you know, we make ingrain cutting boards out of scraps and things from time to time. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we, you know, we actually make them from, you know, lumber and all that stuff. But usually we, you know, a lot of, a lot of projects and all, we'll have scraps. We end up, you know, uh, gluing them together or epoxying them or whatever the case may be. And we make something from it, right? Well, I want tonight's lesson to be one of those types of projects where it could be new wood. But it also could be some of your scraps in your shop. It could also be some reclaimed wood that you've got your hands on. And you might have some pallets that you got your hands on as two that you could break down and uh, turn turn something really uh, cool and simple into something, you know, um, cool and simple, right? All right. Uh, and, uh, and Bear, I appreciate you, man. I really do. Thank you for saying that. I'm glad that uh, what Bear said is, you know, he watched almost all of my videos, which is cool because they're long. Uh, but, uh, you know, he learns uh, uh, tons and, 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 and I, I appreciate those words uh, and I appreciate it from uh, everybody as well, too. Uh, so, 
<clears throat> let's go ahead and let's get into this. And we're going to get into this. We're going to start by looking at the files that are going to be given to you in the in the downloads for free. Um, if you are a digital wood carver owner, if you own one of our digital wood carver CNCs, there's a 98% chance that you already have the state files that I'm about to show. There's a 98% chance that you already have those files that you already have those files in your um, flash drive that came with your machine. Okay, there's already a chance of that. But let's go ahead and let's pull up this here. Okay, bear with me, they're gonna be in downloads. And let's go to Vetric, we're here, let's go to the 2D view. I'm gonna move these files out of the way for a moment. And the first set of files, let's import. The first set of files uh, is going to be a file that I give away in the 4th of July projects Oh heck, uh, a long time ago, um, and it is the perfectly proportioned state flags, um, the United States uh, flag uh, for the 1776 Betsy Ross and the current uh, state flag. So that one is, let's bring that in. That's gonna be these two files here. So you will have a current US flag here. And you will have a kind of a 1776 for whatever, you know, other projects you might want to use. And then you're going to have Coming back, bear with me. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? You're going to have a folder that has uh, SVG and DXF versions of all of the states in the United States outlines. Uh, and so let's grab one of these. I'm gonna do Texas just as an example. Uh, we'll do Texas DXF. And so you'll have all of the outlines for all the different states and everything to go with it. So you're gonna have, I mean, all the work is pretty much gonna be done as far as all you have to do is import a couple of files and, but of course we got to do the layout and stuff like that. But, uh, so you're going to get every vector outline of all the states in the United States, uh, that you can work with. And you're going to get those two perfectly proportioned flags, uh, as well. Um, and, uh, those flags are scalable. You can scale them up or down for any of your flag projects. Uh, don't stretch them or skew them. They are absolutely perfectly proportioned for the constitution and everything. Uh, requirements and also just scale them up and down using the you know corner scales and all when you're working with those flags uh, to get them down to the size you want but don't stretch them and you'll be good to go and so that being said we'll work with Texas for our first project but let's start at the beginning here uh, let's go in and um, let me delete Texas. We'll bring everything in back in after we delete it all. 
but let's look at our job setup here. So for our job setup, we are gonna start off because we're basing it off of the flag and the flags are scaled to size and they're at their full size, which is 38 inches by 20 and 5 16 now just set up the job for this size uh 38 inches by 20 and 5 16 import your flags get everything you know laid out once you get all of the stuff trimmed which you'll see in a moment then we can scale it down to fit our project size and stuff but let's start out with the full size first on the initial design so we're gonna do 38 by 20 and 5 16 by three quarter inches thick. Your, uh, we'll touch off on the material surface or the machine bed. Now, if you're working with reclaimed wood, we want a nice flat surface and things to kind of you know reference off of for tool changes and stuff. So I'd probably work off the machine bed, your wasteboard or uh, you know what have you um, for your Z0 position. If it's a nice flat piece of wood that you've kind of you know, plane down and stuff and uh, and all, then you could just reference off the material surface. Totally up to you. In this instance, I'm gonna reference off the material surface. I'm going to start from the center of this project and we're gonna click OK. Uh, let me put these two on a different layer. And let me turn that layer's visibility off for a moment. So we have our blank here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the flag files. So that flag file is named flag proportions. So we're gonna import, it's a vector, it's a DXF. Uh, so we're gonna import that vector file and you would navigate to your downloads folder or wherever that file happens to be. Uh, and uh, whenever you save it, you know, onto your computer um, and when you import it in it's always going to kind of import in this location on your screen at this point you're going to choose which of the two flags you want to work with and get rid of the one that you don't and the one that you do go ahead and get it centered onto your material it will be size the exact size so get it centered on the material now this flag uh, vector file here has both the white stripes and the red stripes. The vectors drawn out the rectangles for each of the stripes. We do not use the red stripes in any of the tool paths uh, generally ever. Uh, so we're going to take those red, vect red stripe vectors and we're going to move them to their own layer. So we're going to select uh, the first one is you're going to the red stripe is always going to be the first one and then every other stripe so i'm going to hold down my shift key and i'm going to select every other stripe in the design and what you want to uh you want to start off with the first one i'm holding the shift key i got let me talk my way through this as i do this i'm holding the shift key so i can select more than one item and I'm using the end here and I'm selecting the end. You can't select it right in the middle here because there's two stripe rectangles that are kind of on top of each other, right? So grab it on the end and it'll be hard to see the pink, you know, with the, with the background and everything. It's hard to see the pink, but uh, it is selected. And then every other stripe you're gonna you know, skip one, hold down your shift key, select the next one. Skip one, select the next one. Skip, select, skip, select, skip, select. Don't, <laughs> when you're saying skip, don't click on it. <laughs> select, skip, and select. Once you do that, you should have all of the stripes that are, that are gonna be the red stripes, should be, uh, you know, should start with the first one and end with the last one pretty much every other stripe so now i'm going to right click and i'm going to move that to a new layer and i'm going to call this layer red stripes and since i already have a layer called red stripes in my program right here i'm just going to call it red stripes too and i usually kind of turn it red and uh click ok so you can kind of see those red vectors after we turn them red but what you really want to do is turn the light bulb off. We want to hide them. We want to get rid of them. We will never use them 
in the design, when we're doing the pockets and the stars and all that stuff, the actual carving, the only time we'll use the red stripes is helping us align if we are carving text. Normally, we, if we were carving text like We the People or, you know, America the Beautiful or whatever the case may be, Amazing Grace and things like that, we usually will carve those on the raised stripes, which would be the red stripes. And so we would use those red stripes to help us with alignment and everything. Uh, but in the case of what we're doing tonight, we want to turn the visibility off on those stripes and hide them. We don't want them in our way while we work with our other things. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Dave, how you doing, bud? All right. So now we have our flag imported in. We've got it centered on the material and we've taken every other stripe starting with the first one ending with the last one and we've moved them to another layer called red stripes and we've turned the visibility of that layer off so now all we have are our white stripes uh that are that are visible okay so we just have the white stripes we're going to use those for the pocket cuts and things now we're going to import one of our state vectors, whatever state you would like, all the states, right? Why, why, why limit yourself? You have all of them. Sell them all. Everybody from every state wants to buy it, right? Um, but uh, this is one project. We're going to talk about other options that you can do with those states and things. Uh, but let's get through this in a nice, organized, and timely manner. And then we'll move on and talk about other stuff. All right, so now that we have this, we're going to import another vector. And that vector is going to be, you're going to navigate to the files that have your, um, that have your states, you know, uh, outlined and everything. In this case, I'm going to do Texas again, just, you know, the Lone Star State will do Texas for right now. And uh, we're going to... Uh, open that up. Now you do have both a DXF version and an SVG, ver SVG version. Either one of the two is fine. Now when the state imports, I'll drag it over here for a moment off to the side, but when it imports, it's going to have this rectangle around it. All of them will have that rectangle outline around it. Uh, we will delete that. We don't need it. Okay. Um, it's there if someone did need it for another type of project or whatever. Uh, but um, in this, for what we're doing here, it's going to be eliminated. Now, some states and everything will have, you know, I mean, the states are traced exactly as they are. Uh, and um, with all of their little islands and inlets and peninsulas and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, um, you have the choice if you want to minimize all that stuff and clean it up and just have an outline you could, you know, uh, remove those kind of things and stuff. I like keeping them in and incorporating them into the design. So that's what we're going to do. Um, the uh, only thing that we, you know, we'll see how the vectors clean up when we do our trimming boundary, which you'll see in a minute. Don't want to jump ahead. We'll see how things uh, shape up there. Uh, but what we want to do now is we're going to take the state and it's currently broken up uh, into multiple vectors here. The, this little island stream here or what have you on the state of Texas and all. But um, we're going to uh, come in and group it together so you can use the group tool over here. But a keyboard shortcut is the letter G. When you select a vector... You can hit the letter G to group it together. And the letter U is ungroup. So that'll save you a bit of a mouse stroke coming over here to hit the group or ungroup button. It'll save you from right clicking and going to group and ungroup here in the menu. Uh, just hit the letter G for group and the letter U for ungroup and you'll be good to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna size this up, make this a little bit bigger. And what my goal is, is when I size it up, I do not want it to go past the bottom of the flag. And I do not want it to go past the top of the flag, right? So we want to size it 
um, to where we are just inside the flag. And then I'm going to center it up and down. Right? So I have some room because we're going to create some offset boundaries on the outside and everything. And uh, don't make it, don't, when you size it, don't make it like the full 20 and 5 16 We are going to be offsetting outward to create a boundary. We're going to be offsetting outward about 3 16 to one quarter inch, depending on what preference, what looks visually better for you or to you, should I say. Uh, we're going to be offsetting outward to create a boundary for the profile cut to cut the part out. So give yourself that kind of room on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold down my shift key because it's centered. I want to keep it centered. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to grab one of the corner blocks and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay. But I do want the bottom of the state to be in the red stripe down here. I don't want to be up in my white, you know, and stuff. So that's going to be good right in there. Now, everybody with me so far? Everybody with me, with me, with me? Cool, cool, cool. Hey, Mark Lindsay, how you doing? Thanks for dropping by, Troy and all. But uh, now what we're going to do is we want some stars in this design. So we're going to move this over and where you decide where you decide where the stars are going to start and stop in your state. Let me turn on, let's, let's look at the other two states that I did earlier. Um, here, you can see where the stars kind of are here, but we have the stripes and then how I have the stars kind of in the pan handle of the Florida here. So we're going to drag the state over to where the stars are going to be, you know, uh, uh, in that state somewhat and all. Uh, but it's going to be up to you where you want the state to uh, start and stop. And you might want, let's say up here at the top part of Texas, you might want some of the stripe in there as well too, right? So again, kind of where you want it to fall, totally up to you. Kind of figure out what you want. Now in my case, I do want a little bit of the red, the initial red and white stripe here at the top of the flag. I want that uh, kind of up in this peak part of Texas and everything. So I believe, I believe that, um, and again, let me get it centered up and down. I believe I'm going to be content with that. Yeah. I am going to be, I'll be happy with that. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So that's the position it's going to be in right there. So I've got it centered up and down. Now I don't necessarily have to have it centered up and down, right? I could move it all the way up here. So I get a full red stripe at the top and all that, I just won't, you know, the state's only so big, right? Uh, and, and everything, but remember, we're offsetting for a boundary, so not necessarily what we wanna, what we wanna do, but we could, because when we trim all this way, we're gonna recenter it anyway, and we could create the boundary after the fact. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say that I trimmed everything away, and I only had the, star or the state available um, and uh, I've already trimmed and got all my stars and stripes inside the state I'm gonna be recentering that state or repositioning it to minimize the waste on my material that I'm cutting so at that point I'm gonna have wood to create that boundary if I wanted to offset that outward offset in this case I'm gonna go uh, 3 16 I could create that offset outward after the fact um, to let it uh, let it generate. It's working on it. It's working on it. All right, to create that boundary, 
and everything, you know, because that's going to be my profile cutout boundary. Um, I could do that now, right? You know, at the end, I don't have to do it right when I'm on top of the flag. I'm using the flag to grab stars and stripes from it. Everything else gets deleted. You'll see in just a minute when we actually do it. So I don't have to be worried about the state of Texas or the state of Florida, or the state of Georgia being perfectly centered on the flag at that moment in time. I can position it anywhere I want that looks good to me, right? So when we go back into our flag here, I could either have it centered on the board now and just position it over where I want the, the stars and stripes, or I could move it up here, whatever the case may be, but make sure it stays on the board. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna get a little bit of stripes here, but I want some of the stars in there. So I think I'm gonna go pretty much along this line here. All right, that's where I wanna be. So now we've got our state, we got our flag, we've got our flag or our state position on our flag where we want to do our trimming, okay? Okay. Next step, step number three, after we get position and all. The state, we're going to offset inward first to create a trim boundary. And by the way, these steps are the same steps for every single state that you're going to be doing. It's literally, literally, literally rinse and repeat, okay? Every state you're gonna be doing. So you're gonna import the flag, whichever flag you choose. You're gonna import the state, size that state up and get it positioned. And then you're gonna create the offset inward first. That's what we're doing. Now the inward offset is gonna be a trimming boundary. So I don't want it very big. It's only for the purpose of trimming. And so it's going to be an inward boundary. And for me, I always use 1 32nd. Uh, you could do more 16th, 0.4, whatever, right? Your call, your choice. It's There's no right or wrong here. I try to stick with consistent numbers so it's really fast for me to do. And for me, my offset inward is 1 32nd. So 0.0. .0 three, one, two, five. Okay. Now, if you don't know, these calculation edit boxes are also, they're like little calculators. If you don't know a decimal for a fraction, you can type in the fraction, one thirty second, and simply hit the equal sign on the keyboard and it will convert that fraction to the decimal for you. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So now we have uh, the ability to, uh, we want to select the new. Uh, we don't want sharp corners or anything. Uh, we don't want to delete the original by any means. Uh, so just make sure select new is selected and we're going to click offset. Now, this is going to say that you're creating uh, um, overlaps and intersections and things like that. That's fine. What those are going to be, are they're most likely 90% of the time, they're going to be zero length spans. And we're going to be cleaning those up in the design in just a moment. So we're going to just send, click continue anyway. Okay. So on this one, offset inward, for me, it's a 30 second. It's going to give me a warning that we might create overlaps with this offset. Uh, we're going to click continue anyway. Uh, and let it do the offset and then we'll do any cleanup that we need to in a moment. Okay, cool beans. So what you'll see now is this newly selected vector here. Uh, what we have done is we've created this boundary, this internal boundary around the entire inside of the state. It's going to be our trim boundary. All right. So if you are with me up to this point, after the offset inward is complete, the next step is to select all of our stripes, select all the stripes. And notice what I did here. I went from, I held down my left mouse button and I went from right to left, bottom to top. And basically anything my little selection window that I'm drawing, Anything it touches, it'll select. 
right to left, bottom to top, anything that that box touches, it's going to select. So I'm just selecting all my stripes. Okay, that's number one. Now, this time I'm going to draw from left to right, and I want to select all the stars that are inside of my state, and I want to deselect any of the stars that get caught in my selection that are outside of the state. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. Always hold your shift key because you're adding more items to your selection. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to select these stars here and here. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to deselect any star that's not inside of my state. If there's a small point on the inside, that counts. So only deselect the stars that are not inside. Now this one, that's that doesn't count. That's my boundary. That's a, a dead space there. Get rid of it. Deselect it. Uh, if it's if it's past the inside vector, which is our trimming boundary, keep it. All right, so we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of that one. So the only thing that should be selected are stars that fall within our inside boundary inside our vector here. Okay, that's the stars. Now, the next step, once those are all selected and deselected for the ones that you're not using, you're going to hit the letter G for group on your keyboard to group that selection together. That's going to be, we want the software treating it like one item. Okay? All right. Cool, cool. Now, once we have that grouped selection selected, you know, the next step is to do the trimming. And we have to make sure that we hold down our shift key and select our trimming boundary, which is that inside offset that we made last. So it has to be selected after all of our stars and stripes, right? So they should be pink first. Meaning if I, if I was like this on the screen, everything's black. I need to make sure that my group of stars and stripes is selected first. Then I need to hold my shift key down and select my trim boundary, which is that inner offset, last. Always last. Okay? So here we are. We've got our flag. We've got our state, state's position. We offset that state. We've selected all the stars and stripes that are inside of that state and we've grouped those together. And now we've selected that group plus that inner offset. Make sure it's last. And now we're gonna go do trimming. Now when we, when we trim, we have lots of different trim tools, but there's one specifically called trim. It looks like a barber pole icon or a candy cane, whatever you wanna call it. But that's our trim tool. Now our scissors are interactive trimming where we're, we're clicking and clicking to trim, that's interactive. Well, we, we're, we are automatically trimming right now, so we wanna use our trim tool. So open that up. Now, if you ever wanna know about any of your tools and how to use them and things, you can click on the very cool question mark up here at the top of the screen, and that will open up the manual uh, to the page about that tool to tell you, you know, how that tool works and how to operate it and things like that. In this case, and there's also some little notes in the tool itself. Okay, there's also some little notes in the tool itself. And so it says, select the objects that you wish to trim first, and then add to that selection by trimming the boundary last and uh, you know the um, objects will be trimmed to that boundary. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of everything outside of the boundary, outside of it, I wanna get rid of it all. So I wanna clear outside the boundary. Now when I do that, it's gonna remove all the stripes that are outside of the boundary and all of the selected stars that were outside of that boundary, it got rid of, but it left these other stars because they weren't part of the selection, 
okay? All right? Now, don't get click happy and stuff because when it trims, when it trims, those vectors are going to be selected, okay? They're going to be pink. They're going to be, that means they're selected. They're going to be selected. As soon as you trim, it's going to trim those and they're going to be selected. And we want to be able to move this state now. So what we're going to do is we're not going to just click. We're going to hold down the shift key and we're going to add our two boundaries of our state to the selection that's already pink. And then we can move it as a whole. Okay. And once we move it as a whole, then we can come over here and delete what we are not uh, utilizing and stuff. Okay, I had some trash on my board. So we now have this state here. And I'm just gonna center it on my material. I would probably be doing a couple of these and if I was doing it out of a big panel, uh, then I'd lay them out, you know, in, you know, in that big panel. If I was doing them out of one glue up that I did, you know, one scrap piece of glue up, then I'm gonna size my board now to the appropriate size, right? And stuff. And um, we can either keep our main board, sheet one, at its original size, or if we're 100% confident that we're done with our trimming and all that stuff, and we don't need that sheet to be that big anymore, we can just go in and alter the size to the actual size of your project board that you're working with. Remember what I said at the beginning, go ahead and size it to that 38 by 20 and 5 sixteenths, that way we can, you know, lay out the flag, get our state sized up and do our trim. Then we can come back and resize things to whatever size material that we're going to be working with, right? And let's say that for me, let's say that the project that I was going to be carving and that I've glued up, I made a, let's say a, a 16 by 16 glue up. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go 16 by 16 and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to take my state and get it centered on the board and then I'm going to go into my size tool and I'm going to take my largest size and bring it down below 16. So in my case, I'm going to, I want to try to uh, remember now I got another 3 8 offset that I got to do. So I'm going to go uh, 15 inches and click here to get it on the board. Everybody with me so far? Everybody's still awake. All right, we're, 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 we're getting there. Now, turn off all the selection, click anywhere in white or gray space, and we're going to select the outside boundary, the outside boundary and of the uh, state and we're going to offset it outward. Now what this is going to do, this is going to create the profile for our profile cut to cut the part out and all that stuff. It's also going to create basically kind of a lip around the state. Uh, it's going to create kind of a boundary lip, three eighths, quarter inch, whatever, however wide you want it. In my case, uh, I'm going to go and I just said three eighths out of my mouth and I meant three sixteenths. Three sixteenths, quarter, however wide you want it. I personally wouldn't go over a quarter wide, but again, it's it's creator's preference, right? All right, so I'm gonna go 0 0.1875, three sixteenths, and I'm going to offset outward, outward, and Click continue anyway. Remember, it's going to create some zero length spans and stuff. We're going to clean those up. This That's the next step. All right. So recap here. Recap. We imported the state, centered it on the board. 38, 20 and 5 sixteenths. Or we imported the flag, sorry. 
we imported the state, sized it up, and then laid it out on our flag where we wanted our kind of our stars and stripes to be trimmed from. We created an offset inward of our state three and uh, uh, thirty second. And that's going to be our trim boundary. That's that little line right there. And then we selected all the stars that are inside of our vector, all the stripes. We grouped them together. We made sure that group was selected first. We selected the trim boundary last, and we ran the trim tool to clear it all out. We moved this over and got rid of everything that wasn't part of our remaining design. We've sized the board down to the size of the actual project we're gonna carve. We've got it centered on there and we just created our profile offset outward for our cutout profile line. Okay, cool. And I'm repeating myself because in, when somebody watched through, maybe, you know, depending on where they wanna jump ahead, they'll kind of get these things. Okay, now I do wanna run the vector validator. On this outside boundary here, I am gonna run the vector validator uh, and I'm going to uh, run it and remember what I said that most likely what was created was what's called zero link spans. And what that means is, is there's two nodes that are together. There's no line arc or curve in between them. They're on top of each other. There is no span, it's zero length span between those two nodes. And in this case, that profile that we just offset has two of them. So we're going to uh, fix the zero length spans by clicking the button that says fix zero length spans. And then that's it. We just wanted to clean that up. All right. Cool, cool. All right, now our next step is tool paths. So let's jump over to the tool paths because we've done, we're done with everything else. We're done with the tool paths and all. Uh, what we don't need any longer so let's not confuse it. You have a choice here at this point. This trim boundary, that offset inward that we did, once everything is trimmed and done, you have a choice. You either delete it and eliminate it from the design, or you move it to another layer and turn that layer visibility off because you're done with it. We do not need it on the screen any longer your choice on what you want to do. You either delete it, it served its purpose and now it can go away, or just in case I got to go back and edit something or undo something or whatever, I just, I'll move it to another layer. That could be your option as well too. In my case, I'm going to right click and move it to a layer, new layer. And this is going to be my trim boundary. And I'll give it a different color uh, but I will turn the, vi I'll uncheck the visibility. So when I click OK, it goes away. I don't want it visible anymore. It's there. I can go back in and turn it on at any point in time, but I don't need it visible any longer. Okay. All right. All right. Now, the, um, Point we're at now is tool pathing, and I'm gonna get rid of all of these tool paths uh, that I've created earlier today. Get rid of them so we have a blank slate so you're not confused as to what's what. Now the first uh, thing that I like to do is in these particular designs is I like to recess the surface. I like to recess the surface about a 16th to an eighth of an inch, depending on when that lip that's gonna be around the outer edge, I want that lip sitting proud of all the stars and stripes on the inside and everything. And I'm gonna recess that down and it's really kind of, you know, a preference, whether you wanna go a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch, I wouldn't go any deeper than an eighth of an inch. Just a nice, we're creating a nice level. We're creating a nice level. Okay. Thank you, Brooks. I appreciate that. Now, once we have, um, we're ready for tool and all, we're going to select that inner vector, that, that original outline that we had, right? And that's going to be our pocket vector for this recess. So we're going to do a pocket cut. 
And for me, I'm gonna use uh, a cut depth, or I'm gonna create a cut depth of an eighth of an inch. That's gonna be my recess. Um, I am gonna use a combination of bits. Uh, I'm gonna use a combination of a quarter inch bit and an eighth inch bit. Uh, eighth inch bit will get into some of the smaller nooks and crannies. It's not gonna get everywhere, but it'll get in a few of the tight places and all. And so I'll be using those two bits for this pocket cut. And this is gonna be my recess. Pocket. And I'm gonna calculate it. Now, this says that there's vectors that are overlapping and intersecting. These again, these are those zero length spans. So let's go ahead and take a moment and clean those up as well. I should have done that a minute ago, but I didn't. Uh, we're gonna go back over here and we're going to select or search the that boundary that we have selected, not boundary, that vector we have selected. We're gonna select it and we have, let's see how many issues we have in this state. We should have quite a few zero length spans, but we may have some overlaps or intersections that we might have to go back and clean up. We'll find out here in two seconds. Okay, so we did have two zero length spans, but we have some uh, little overlaps and intersections and they're all, it's these straight lines. It's two lines that are kind of put together so, and they're stacked on top of each other. That's why our number for overlaps is so high at 71. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the zero length spans by clicking this button. Okay. And then I'm gonna go in and uh, clean up these intersections, these lines here. Uh, there's probably gonna be a couple of them, but uh, what we're gonna do is go into node editing mode Bear with me. Wait for it for the nodes to come up. There's a lot of them, so we'll clean them up. All right, so if I zoom in here, we're going to select these nodes here, and I'm gonna hit the letter D on the keyboard for delete. The letter D on the keyboard for delete. Wait. There's a lot of nodes within that, that overlap there, you know, just that one line. So depending on the processing power of your computer and things like that, it's gonna kind of lock up for a moment. Give it a moment, okay? Give it just a moment, don't get click happy and all that stuff. Once the once it removes that, and if you find yourself locking up on those, you can go and select each one individually and delete it one by one. Um, what I'm gonna probably do is I'm gonna probably change my strategy here, and I'm probably going to use a different tool depending on what uh, is, you know, what may happen. It is warm in Florida tonight, guys and girls. I have the air turned off so you can hear me and there's no noise in the background and everything. Lord have mercy. All right. Michael, welcome from Massachusetts. Okay, I'm still in a not responding state. It did not like me. <laughs> uh, hitting the keyboard shortcut for delete. Uh, I don't know. Um, it is uh, It is taking a moment to try to figure out what to do. There you go. All right, so I'm not going to group them together and hit delete anymore. I'm going to do them individually. So I'm going to right click and delete the point. And 
delete the point. This little cluster that's here, delete the point. Uh, I'm getting rid of that little cluster. Now, I'm going to run the vector validator again. I'm going to find my other areas, and then I'm going to clean up all these other nodes a little bit. Not a lot. I can't just I can't change them too much because it'll change the outline of the state. But there are a lot of nodes and uh, and everything. But I'm going to zoom out. Let's get out of node editing mode here. And I'm going to go and do that vector validator again. I'm going to let it validate one more time. Uh, and um, I'm going to see if I want to uh, clean up the line a little bit differently or if I just want to go in and just click one by one. There's not a whole lot remaining. Um, so we'll start up here at the top. So again, another one of those lines with those overlaps and intersections. What I'm going to do is I'll go into node editing. And I'm just going to work my way up the line. There are a few nodes on these straight lines. They're kind of stacked on top of each other. So the software, what's happening is it's trying to determine, okay, if, I, if they're on top of each other, if I delete this node, what am I doing with the line that's between that node and the other one? Because it's on top of another one, right? Now, what I could do is I could um, uh, bear with me a moment. I could come in and pull the line out so you can see uh, that overlap, but you know, here, and I could delete the span right to kind of get rid of it but I don't want to confuse you you know you there's there's multiple ways to get rid of the nodes and stuff but what I want to do in this case I'm just gonna right click <clears throat> and I'm gonna point by point uh, just clean up these lines I can't zoom in uh, to this cluster here um, I can't zoom into that cluster there and all, uh, that's as far as the, the screen is going to let me zoom. So I'm going to try to, uh, group those together and hit the letter D and see if it happens a little quicker. Now. These are insignificant. They're really not a big deal. They're not going to affect your design whatsoever. We could have just ignored them and moved on. But where's the lesson in that, right? It's always a good idea to have clean vectors to the best of your ability. And I have the hiccups. Oh, my goodness. It's always good to have clean vectors to the best of your ability. And node editing is a tedious and integral part of creating clean vectors. <laughs> All right. Save your work. Riley's like, hey, man, if your computer crashes right now, you got to start all over. Save your work. And he's absolutely right. So as soon as this is done uh, processing, as soon as these nodes are gone, uh, then I'm going to save my work. Save early, save often. And uh, Riley, thank you for that reminder. Always makes me nervous when I see the not responding. Yes, uh, because what happens right now, it's not responding. It's processing, right? If I were to click any key or click on my screen or what have you, it's going to lock up the software and most likely it's going to go into a fatal crash, right? We don't want that. We don't want the fatal crash. So while it's not responding, leave it alone. Wait it out, okay? It's, you know... If it, it's it's all based on the cores of your processor and things like that, and 
uh, you know, it's it's doing its best to try to, you know, um, clean those up. All right, so we have <coughs> cleaned that up, and I'm going to go ahead and remove this span here uh, to get rid of that. And then I'm going to bring that node over there uh, to join that back. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to see if I can clean up the vector a little bit of a different way to get rid of all the issues. And what that might require, if I clean it up now, it may require me to do an additional trim on my stars and stripes. So knowing that that might happen, I'm going to go ahead and select my stars and stripes I'm going to deselect anything that's not my stars and stripes. Okay. So all my stripes and all my stars. And I'm going to group G. I'm going to group them together in case I need to trim them again. Get that done. Think ahead. Right? Capture yourself ahead. Now, what I'm going to do with this vector that's got some overlaps and stuff, I could ignore it, right? But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Curve Fit tool over here on the left. And I'm going to clean up. I'm using a tolerance of about 10 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I'm going to clean up and try to remove some of those nodes and issue areas and everything. Uh, if, I, if my tolerance is too high, my shape starts getting distorted and I might start losing my outline of the state, right? It might be distorted. If I'm too loose, too low on my tolerance, then I'm not really being effective at all uh, in everything. Um, and so I am, I'm gonna monitor my state here, right? And I'm going to uh, do it again. I've already done it once. You can see some of the nodes have been, you know, gone. Now we have, you know, they're spaced out some. But again, I need to be mindful that I don't lose the shape of my state, right? But I'm going to do it again. Another ten thousandths tolerance. See if I can clean it up just a little bit more. I'm going to sneak up on it. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. Stand by. It is processing. Okay. And I, I'm i going to leave it at that. I don't want to go too, too crazy at all uh, with it. Um on the shape and everything. I want to try to keep that original border and all. But again, like I said, you might, you know, you might want a simplistic outline or something, right? Uh, you might have it to where, you know, it doesn't have all the nooks and crannies of the actual state and everything. You might want it to be just kind of a smooth line. How much you clean up your vector is totally up to you and everything. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Now, I am going to go back and run the vector validator one more time now that I've cleaned it up twice. Uh, because when I did clean it up twice, 99% of the time, I did create some zero length spans in the process. And no, I did not create any zero length spans, but I did minimize my 60 remaining uh, overlaps down to seven, right? So um, just a few areas, little crisscrosses and things and all uh, that need to be cleaned up. In this case, I'm gonna use the scissors and see if I can clean that up. And I don't know why I'm processing heavily tonight, but I got to save after this. Remind me to save again, Riley. Um, stand by. 
do, do, do. Okay, I'm gonna hit close on this and I'm gonna hit save really quickly. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Okay, there we go. And um, so I've gotten rid of that overlap. Uh, let's one more time. Vector validator. We're getting through it, guys. It's this is you know the 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 processing and you know of the cleanup and stuff that needs to be done. That's what takes the time. That's what makes a one hour class so forever. All right, so we're going to get rid of the zero length spans. And clean those up. And all I have is I've got this to clean up here. So let me close that. I'm going to use the scissors again and just trim that away. Now that should trim instantly, uh, but again, for some reason, don't know if it's because I'm streaming live or what, but uh, the processing, the response time is oddly slow. Oddly slow. All right, close that. Okay. One more time, one more time, one more time. And then we'll move on. Now, I'm going to show you how to get a smoother boundary if you want to just, okay, I just want the general outline, Laney. I don't need all that high detail in there and everything. I'm going to show you how to do that. That's the last thing we're going to do after we finish these tool paths. And that's it. And that's only going to take about two minutes to show you. Uh, but we're down to, um, we've got just a couple of more areas to clean up. So we're going to take our scissors and trim this. Save. Yes, Jeff, I just saved. We're going to save again. I'm bad for making duplicate vectors. Right, Wade? Yes, we have a habit of doing that when we copy and paste and things. All right. Um, now, notice when I trimmed away, I lost my entire outline. So undo. Bring that back. Undo. Okay, so on this overlap here, okay, these two vectors didn't, uh, they weren't connected. So when I actually trimmed them, I actually trimmed away one half and the other half. Um, when in reality, we have um, these overlaps here and here that we're trying to just get rid of. So those are spans. So delete that span, delete that. I'm just gonna work my way around. I just pulled them out and kind of stretched them out. Uh, delete that span. Now, if I delete this span, it's gonna delete it up to here. And that's fine for me, I'm good with that. And if I delete this span, it'll go to there. And then I'm gonna just join this back with a smooth curve because it's so small. It is so small in the scheme of things when you zoom out in the detail. Now the last two places were down here at the very bottom. Uh, the one last time I'll do one more vector validator so we can move on. Uh, and I'll remember where they are because they're side by side this time around. But um, it's a necessary evil, but it is an evil to clean these up. We got to clean them up. And we don't want to use that. We want to use the uh, curve fit tool but we need to use it sparingly so we don't lose our detail and everything. And I'll be darned if I didn't just uh, close that out. After I did the validator, I closed it out. 
All right. Don't forget to give Lenny a thumbs up. That's right. If you like what you're learning tonight, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so uh, we have two overlaps, four intersections, and everything is concentrated right down here. This is our remaining overlaps and intersections on this entire project. Uh, again, I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to use my node editing, and I'm going to grab this vector, and I'm going to pull that overlap away, right? And I'm just looking, kind of seeing what I've got going on here. And I'm going to delete the span. I'm deleting the span. These are lines, arcs, and curves to there and I'll go ahead and delete this one too and then I'm just going to join that back together with a smooth curve right just to clean it up now that's done I'm done with that uh, if we go to our vector validator um, we if we go back to our vector validator we should have a clean file now no zero link spans no overlaps no intersections anything like that um, and uh, we can move on but again, I'm going to show you the last thing, so stick around to the end. I'm going to show you how to get just a clean basic vector for your basic outline uh, to remove some of the high detail and everything. We still have two intersections right there, right? So that little crisscross. And all I'm going to do on that is I'm going to pull this down here. Okay. All right, so we're cleaned up now. And that's a little island that's in there. Um, and all. All right. So I don't have to redraw anything. I don't have to re-trim any of my vectors or any of that stuff. I can just continue on with what I was trying to do before all the errors popped up. And so what we were going, what we were doing is we had our inside boundary selected. We had our inside boundary selected and we were doing a pocket cut that recess of an eighth of an inch deep. We're calculating that. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill and an eighth inch end mill. And we're bringing down the surface of this inner area. We're bringing it down an eighth of an inch. Okay. Thanks, Richard. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to go to just a blank plain board for a moment. We'll come back to the pallet wood in just a second. But I'm going to go to maple so it's a little bit cleaner visually for you guys and girls. And we're going to preview uh, that pocket cut. And literally, all we're doing is we're recessing, we're taking away that inner area just down either a 16th or an 8th. In this case, I went an eighth of an inch. Okay? So we're bringing that down just to create levels. Levels. Levels are appealing. Now... We're going to do our stripes, okay? Our stripes uh, and our stars. Remember, we grouped them together earlier. Uh, I'm going to ungroup them now because I don't need I don't need them grouped any longer. I didn't need to you know do any resizing or any of that stuff. So, but I want what I want is I want my stripes. This one too. Hold that shift key down and select it. I want my stripes here. And I'm going to uh, do a V carve. I like the V carve, not just a straight pocket, because the V bit's going to be able to get into all these little nooks and crannies where the end mills can't. So I'm going to do a V carve toolpath. I'm starting, starting at my eighth of an inch. Remember, we just recessed that pocket down an eighth of an inch. So I'm starting at that 0.125. Almost at 1.25. 0.125. And I'm going to end at another 0.125. So I'm going to cut these stripes down another eighth of an inch. I'm going to use my 60 degree V bit. And for this small area and everything, I'm just going to do an eighth inch end mill. Now, I could do a combination of the quarter and the eighth to reduce time. Because I'm already using a quarter and an eighth on the main pocket, right? Uh, I could do a quarter and an eighth here to reduce time as well. And I could have the two tool pass doing my stripes quarter and then the eighth, quarter and eighth and V bit and all. Your choice. Up to you. 
and I'm going to calculate this. This is my stripes. And this is going to uh, go in and carve the stripes. Okay. Then I'm going to select the stars. Make sure you get all your little points and all that stuff too. This one is also a V-carve toolpath. It's also starting at an eighth of an inch, but one difference, no flat depth. I'm not limiting the cut of the stars. I'm letting it go to its full depth. I like the stars to be pointed, not flat. So uh, at the bottom of the cut, so no flat depth. Starting at an eighth, no flat depth, so I don't need a clearance tool. I just need my 60 degree V-bit or whatever V-bit you want to use. And we're going to do the stripes. Or the stars, sorry. Okay. Now, some may not like the stars carving into the border here. You know that V-bit cutting those little points? And they may say, you know what? Don't do the points. Uh, they're, they're insignificant. They don't really, they're not, you know, they're, you're not seeing them very well anyway. They're super shallow and they're just, you know, don't do the stripes, right? Or the, those little points. And I, I could tend to agree, right? Um, and all, uh, especially this one up here that is super nothing, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my stripes and I'm gonna, or my stars, sorry, my stars. And I'm going to not select the, these little points. Sometimes I keep them, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the product. But in this case, eliminate them. Calculate. Okay. And since I'm not going to use them, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my vectors by selecting and deleting them. Get rid of them. If you're not going to use them, get rid of them. All right. So now... I have my stars and let's add some color so you can see, you know, not that kind of color. <laughs> let's add some color so you can see uh, where we're at as far as the uh, design and right. So we're here now, right? Ignoring these black dots right here, if I recalculated or restarted the toolpath again, you would see they wouldn't be there because they're not in the new toolpath, but they're there because they're in my preview apparently uh, right now. And then our final cut is the profile cutout. Final cut is the profile cutout. So we're going to do a profile cutout. Uh, I'm cutting three quarters of an inch through my material. I, you know, on some of my states, because of, I want to try to get into the little nooks and crannies where I can and stuff, uh, I tend to use my longer, uh, long reach eighth inch end mill for the profile cut. Um, and uh, that's totally up to you. You can use a quarter inch end mill or eighth inch end mill. I use an eighth just so if there are any little nooks and crannies and all, it'll get in there tighter and stuff like that. So I'm using an eighth inch end mill. And this is my profile cutout. And we're going to calculate that. Preview the visible toolpath. Now, notice I didn't add any tabs or anything like that. Uh, of course, we could absolutely add tabs uh, for this. I did not add tabs for visual purposes. All right. Uh, let's turn off the color for a minute. And let's zoom in on this cut. You can see where the V-bit uh, cut around the stripes here, that detail on the inside. That difference between this border and this border is that 32nd of an inch offset. And, um, and you may uh, want to clean that up. You may not. You may want these to be, uh, you know, you may not want that lip right there. If you didn't, if you didn't want that lip there, then what you would need to do is you would need to combine your stripe 
with this vector. I'm going to do just one and it would be rinse and repeat for the others, okay? What you would have to do is you would move, not moving, sorry, you would copy that boundary to another layer and we'll call this our new stripe trim, whatever, give it a name and click OK. And then our stripe We could leave it alone, right where it's at. But we turn off everything, okay? Everything except for the stripes. Select your stripes. Just the stripes, Lainey, just the stripes. We will copy those to that new trim boundary and we turn off everything. So the only thing that's visible, and I'll make it a different color, let's go red. Can everybody see red? Anybody have any color issues that I need to be aware of? Can everybody see red? Um, what we want is what we're doing, and I'll do, I'll do this one up here, is we're gonna go into node editing we're so the stripe is selected here. We're going to select all of these nodes and I'm going to hit the right arrow key on my keyboard and I'm going to move them past my line here. Okay. Good ways. Move it a good ways. And then I'm going to take my scissor and I'm going to end up trimming above and below the stripe and this getting deleting this line out here. And that would be my new stripe vector that was created. But I wanna be able to do that to all of the stripes. If I'm gonna do it to one, I'm gonna do it to all. So before you start trimming and losing your trim vector, might as well go in and grab your stripe, select all the nodes on the end and shuffle it outward Get them all out there till there's nothing but a straight line past your boundary. Okay, straight line past your boundary. Do that for all the stripes. There's not that many. So we'll move that out. Do this side, left arrow key, move that out. This bottom one. Now this bottom one's got it going in all directions, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll pick and choose my battles here. I'm going to go here and move this outward. I'll go here, oops, move this outward to the left and move all of this down, right? Now, this outside boundary, that's the new boundary, so I'm not worried about all this stuff. Uh, let's go, let's see what other stripes. So this stripe on this side, here, bring it out. This here, bring it down. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that, ladies and gentlemen. On that one, I'm going to leave that alone. I'll leave that one alone. So uh, one, two more. This one, bring that. I won't leave that one alone. I'll come back and do that one separate. But let's do this one. Now this one, I'm going to insert a point right smack dab next to... No, I'm not. I, that's, I just lied to you. I'm not going to select... I'm going to select these vectors, and I'm going to use the right arrow key, and I'm going to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle them out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Get them out there. Don't worry about all these overlaps. All they're all going to get trimmed away. It's crazy right now. It's super, super crazy. All right. Make sure that this vector right here is not selected. 
Um, I'm going to go up now. Okay. I got it outside the state now. Scissors, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Uh, all we're doing is we're keeping uh, the stripes. That's the only thing that should be left. So get rid of everything that's outside of the state outline. Boom. Boom. Okay. Get rid of your anything that's outside of the borderline and then get rid of what's on top of the stripe and what's below the stripe. Okay. Hang tight. It did not like me moving rapidly. I'm going to save again after this because we got to move on. Already another 15 minutes gone uh, just to show you how to clean things up. All right. So that trimmed that away all the way to there. That's good. Uh, let's hit save real quick. Okay. All right. Now, notice what happened here. Um, the boundary, this boundary right here got moved uh, to uh, the wrong layer. I need to move it back. Give me just a moment. Move it back to the trim boundary. When I trimmed, ladies and gentlemen, I was in the state layer. Uh, make sure you're in that active boundary. Make sure that that's border is, uh, you know, uh, make sure that is uh, uh, bold up there or else it'll throw you off like it just did me. All right. So again, scissors, trim the straight lines. Forget all the wiggly lines, just trim the straight lines. It'll do the rest. We'll delete that. Trim, okay. And then everything between the stripes, get rid of it. Okay, get rid of it. Wait for it. This'll make sense in two seconds. All right, close out of there and get rid of that. Okay, so now we have a new boundary on this stripe. Take our scissors, trim between the stripes away. The only thing that should be left on this is the stripes with this new boundary. The old one is moved out and we're deleting it, cutting it away. So trim, trim, trim. You're gonna have a little residue right there left over. Close that and delete it. Okay. Trim. All right, your stripe. The stripe comes out to here. Get rid of anything on the outside of it. Keep what's on the inside of it. Okay. Outside trim, get rid of that. Again, everything on the outside of it, get rid of. Everything on the inside of it, keep. That's on the outside. This is my stripe right here. This side too. And then here, done. Get rid of the lines in between. Now, undo, I'm gonna go back to this one. This one is the one I said I'm gonna ignore. If I ignore that, if I ignore this one right here, then all of that work I just did to get rid of that little lip Around the inside, it was for not, for nothing. So I gotta contend with this. So really quickly, I wanna take these, shuffle them in, these, shuffle them in, those will shuffle down. I don't care what any of this stuff, these crisscrosses I'm making and all, because all of that is getting 
trimmed away, getting deleted. All right, take our scissors, trim, 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 trim. Get rid of the line between the stripes. Okay. Anything on the outside. All right. Now clean up our trash. Now what we have are stripes with this new boundary. Go back and turn that layer back on. Okay, that layer is going to go back with our state outline here. Okay. That state outline and stuff. All right. This vector was for our pocket. Now, we should be able to do our redo our stripes toolpath again. Calculate. One open vector. Sorry, I got an open vector. Let me fix that really quickly. Select all open vectors, ladies and gentlemen. It's this stripe right here. Uh, let's go to the join tool. And we can see that there's uh, two parts of that vector that are open. And it's because of a poor trim. How do we find the openness? We look for the green node. Go into node editing mode, and it's like, where's Wally? Find the green node, because it's gonna be at the green node where your intersection is gonna, the problem's gonna be. Uh, it's because the green node is the start point, and the start and the end, the start point and the end point did not come together, okay? So if I select all of the open vectors, there are should be one. Let's zoom that selected right there. Just a simple straight line. And that is on the outside, so that gets trimmed away. Get your scissors out, trim it up. Okay. All right, back to what we were just doing. Select the stripes. Calculate the toolpath. Now, what should occur if everything was done correctly? is when it cleans up, it should pull that line back and clean up to that border. So that overlap should be gone now. Okay. Looks weird there, but we'll call it that. I normally don't let, I don't clean up, but you just learn how to waste your time cleaning up vectors. No, I'm just kidding. You didn't waste, it's not a waste of time, but uh, if you want, if you don't like that lip or the way it looks, then you have to basically the outside of your boundary of your stripes has to be the same boundary uh, made up of the same boundary as your inner vector, okay? So this is our state outline here, all right? We have our, um, let's reset the preview and preview the entire toolpath as a whole. So the recess, the stripes, the stars and the profile cut. Preview the recess first. Why doesn't everyone use a compression bit to cut profiles? A compression bit is uh, used to create a mirror finish cut uh, on the top surface and the lo lower surface of uh, your material to prevent chip out and hardwoods and everything uh, very rarely chip out. Um, so typically a compression bit is reserved, typically in my experience is reserved for plywood where the veneers have the possibility of chipping on the top and the bottom. And a compression bit is used when you want a mirror clean cut on both edges. Um, 
it would uh, it's not a go-to tool to be used for everyday profile cutting and things like that um, and all now um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have one last cleanup here since I've got my V-bit cutting on the inside of the stripes here, uh, I want to take that original pocket cut, that recessed pocket cut that I did, and instead of it being a pocket cut, I'm going to switch it up and make it a V-carve. So we're going on that original pocket cut, that eighth of an inch recess. Instead of it being a pocket cut, I'm going to go a V-carve. I'm going to start at zero. Cut down an eighth of an inch with my 60 degree V bit, and I'm gonna use a quarter inch and an eighth inch end mill, just like I did with the pocket, but I'm gonna do it as a V carve. That way the edges blend in with the stripes and everything all the way around. So we're going to calculate this new recess. And this is it, this is the end. This is the this is the final cutout here. Yeah, so a, a, a good good point, Mark. You know, so in a, a compression bit, you know, your first cut has to be past that upcut portion, or else it, it's it's pointless to be even using it. If your first pass isn't past that first portion of that upcut, then you're defeating the whole purpose of the compression bit. Your first pass has to be deep enough to be past that first portion of that upcut. Generally, it's about a quarter of an inch. So you're running at a quarter of an inch for your first pass or more uh, to get past that, to get the benefits of that compression bit. And like Mark Lindsay said in the chat is some, most classes or most machines, they don't have the strength or rigidity, uh, the construction to handle that type of cut and everything. Um, so this pocket cut is going to go through with a quarter inch and an eighth inch end mill. And it's going to cut down to that eighth of an inch. Uh, the only difference is, is the V bit's going to come back and do the edge work. That 60 degree V bit's going to come back and do the edge work uh, to give us a little bit of a 60 degree angle here on the cut, right? So now when I do the stars and stripes, um, the stripes, I'll do the stars too. Uh, when those are cutting, they're starting at that eighth of an inch down, but the stripes have that, also have that 60 degree angle cut on them. So the carve is gonna be kind of a continuation of that and all. Now here, up here, this cut here, um, because of that angle and all uh, that recess and everything on this stripe, basically this first stripe right here, it's because the line um, is uh, continue. You know, our profile cut is also continuing on, but the stripe is going this way, and we can see it. It's standing out more so than all the others. So we're just not seeing it as visually. That's why you're seeing that, but it's not that big of a deal. Now let's do the profile cut to cut it out. And you know, that would be our state cut out. And again, Colorado, Ohio, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, California, it doesn't matter what our, um, our state is, it's the same steps. Import the flag, full size, 38 by 20 and 5 sixteenths. Get it centered on the board. Import the vector for whatever state you're using. Get that state sized up and get it positioned to where you have some stars and stripes inside of that state and all. Create an offset inward of three six or uh, 132nd to create a trimming boundary for our stars and stripes. Select all the stripes, select the stars that are inside the shape and group them together. Make sure that group is selected first, select the boundary last and trim clearing outside of the boundary. That gets rid of everything. Move your state out of the way, get rid of everything else. Resize your board down to 
the actual size of your project board, get it positioned, get it sized down and create your offset outward to create the profile cut. The steps in here are going to be the same steps over and over and over again for every state that you decide to do. Okay. Now, clean up and all that stuff, that's, that's going to vary from state to state. So some of them may require clean up and all. Now, I promised you that after we created the state and all, I would show you how to just create a simple boundary without all the high detail. If you didn't want the high detail in there, you just want a simple outline that pretty much represents the state. Here's how you would do that. So we're going to go in and we're going to create a new layer. And we're just going to call this new boundary. We're going to take the offset that we created that three eighths of an inch offset that we created outward. And let's do it from scratch from, from the beginning. All right, we're gonna take, let's pretend we don't have that offset yet. We're gonna take our original state boundary and we're gonna make a copy of it to that. Um, oops, I moved it to the wrong one. Hold on a minute. Do, 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 do. copy of it to the new layer and that layer we're going to call it the new state outline we'll just call it outline we'll make it blue all right let's turn off everything but that new state outline Okay, this represents me just importing brand new, this new state. I just imported it into my design. I, I don't, I, I've got the flag laid up on the screen somewhere, you know, I've got it sized on the 30 by 48. I just brought this state in and I want to kind of, I want to just a, a simple outline of the state without all the high detail. Okay, so here's, here's the way that I would approach this. We would select that new state that we just imported in. So this is our brand new state we just imported in. We would select that and I'm gonna offset outward based on the boundary that I'm using for my profile cut. So that boundary, if you remember, was 3 16 of an inch, right? Remember I said 3 16 or a quarter? So we're gonna offset, I'm using 3 16 So that's what I'm offsetting it outward. No sharp corners. I wanna delete the original. Delete the original and offset outward. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. So you can see now we've got more of a, a, an outline with less detail and things like that. Just a simple outline. Now, when I bring it back inward... Uh, when I bring it back inward, again, deleting the original, offsetting it back inward, no sharp corners and all, it's gonna offset back inward to my original shape, but cleaner, less detail and crap, right? Uh, if you wanna see the difference between the two, I'll show you the original, um, Bear with me a minute. Original. Okay, let's make uh, this layer here. Let's make it red. All right, versus black. You can see on the outline, the black is the original, the red is the new outline. So basically, <coughs> the red, let me get over here on the center of the screen, is the new outline, the black is the old. 
So it got rid of all of those detail areas and everything. Let's turn off that original, right? And we basically, we have that and we have our outside boundary, our 3 eighths of an inch outside boundary. Okay. And that would be our boundary of our state. Okay. Now this area down here, that's not detail or anything. That's a little island peninsula. That's, uh, you know, part of the state. You can decide to keep it or get rid of it, right? You're totally up to you what you, um, what you choose to do. But offset it outward. Deleting the original, offset outward. And then offset it back inward, deleting the, that, the second original. And that just gives you kind of a cleaned up version. We still have the general outline of the state. Just cleaned up. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. So in a nutshell, that's it. So uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, before we do, let me see if um, uh, I can answer a couple of questions. So Brooke says, uh, Laney, would you combine the quarter inch clearance toolpath and the eighth inch toolpaths together? Yeah, so in the toolpaths, once I have them all created, all right, so once I have them all created, all of my quarter inch end mills and all of my eighth inch end mills are going to be, you know, uh, grouped together. So I got a quarter inch in mill. This one should be an eighth and an eighth. Uh, then I have my V bit, V bit, and profile cutout. Uh, this is my. What's this one? That is. Bear with me a second. That is my V part. It goes into with the V bits. All right, so stars. That goes wherever you want. Okay, so all of my, in this case, I only have one quarter inch end mill. Okay, so uh, that's going to get run first. Brooks, that would get run first. Quarter inch end mill would be done. Um, zero at XY, touch off the Z with it, run it. When it's finished carving, then I'm going to change bits to the eighth inch end mill and run the eighth inch end mill tool pass. When that's finished, I'm going to change to the V bit and run all of the V bit tool pass. And then my final change to my quarter inch end mill again, or my eighth, I use an eighth for my profile cut. I only use an eighth, I, I, I generally use a quarter, but I use an eighth on my states because of, you know, the different cutouts and all, uh, the different nooks and crannies. But, you know, that would be my, you know, state. So yes, I would group those tool paths together, uh, um, Brooks. Uh, let's see here. What about Wisconsin? Yeah, Harvey, Wisconsin work too. We can do Wisconsin as well. Um, Riley, let's see here, one of class. I've got about 75% of your classes watched, uh, first time live, and in my opinion, Laney's great at rolling with the punches uh, due to unforeseen circumstances. Thank you, Riley, for, for recognizing that. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, Troy, thanks for agreeing with him. Uh, let's see here. Plus, I figure if I'm here for two hours, well, for an hour, what's another two? <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you think that way. And, you know, I have you loyal guys and girls. Y'all stick around, uh, you know, and uh, for those long hours, but... Um, I appreciate you tonight. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Um, great tutorials uh, might benefit with a Q&A portion after the instruction. Yep. And uh, it's not like we won't make the same mistake. Uh, it will happen, no doubt. Uh, but there is, uh, but we're not left in the dark as to what to do. It means a lot, Lenny. I appreciate that. Well, great. I appreciate that, you know, that you, uh, you know, 
Uh, you like when I make mistakes because you'll probably, you know, you might run into something like that and you see how to correct it and all. Um, now, just to do a, uh, a final wrap up and all, I want to show you some references, okay? Um, Wood State Signs, all right? And I wanna show you some examples of you, you now remember you're going to have all the vectors for all the states that you're going to be able to download within an hour when this class ends within an hour you're going to have all the vectors for all the downloads you're going to have the vectors for the two flags and you're going to have a vector all the state vectors and all and when it comes to state signs state i call them state pride signs right um they are uh there are an abundance of things that you can do and, you know, if you notice, like I'll, I'll click on this one to kind of zoom in here. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they'll stain or they'll dye them. Uh, some will just use uh, pallet wood remnants or reclaimed wood, uh, you know, when they're cutting out their states and everything. Uh, there's Texas, right? You know, so imagine if we had the American flag carved in that. You know what I mean? Uh, we have that lip recess around. We have the stars and stripes carved in it. But all those boards are glued up. Um, uh, just, you know, uh, just like, you know, what we did there, right? So imagine, imagine that, or just, just cutting out like this. I mean, you know, these, uh, these are for sale all over the place on Etsy. Let's look at one of the Etsy's here. And, uh, this particular state, this rustic state, 68 euros, right? So, um, you know, uh, in Texas, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, the, uh, state wood signs and everything. And we're not going to go to Wayfair cause they paint their stuff, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, but these examples, I mean, there are tons and tons of examples of what you can do with these state outlines. Some people will make a, you know, a welcome plaque, uh, with the state as one of the letters, right? Uh, like this, um, home sign here with the state of Texas. Texas is evidently popular tonight. But, um, you know, all these different home signs with the different states, you know, being the O, right? You know, all the different states are the O and the home sign and stuff. But so not just what we just made tonight, you're going to have all of these vectors already created for you that you will be able to go in and uh, people, even their cutoffs, when they cut out a part, they save their cutoff, guys. They save their cutoffs and they sell that. That's $199. That is the off cut of that state. <laughs> so when they cut out the states and the, you know, for the individual states to be hung out, the off cut even gets mounted and sold. That's $199 they're selling it for. Way to go. There's no such thing as waste, right? Um, but so you're going to have all of these outlines and everything and, uh, Great clocks too, Mark Lindsay. Exactly. Clocks and all kinds of stuff. So just think about that. And if you're ever curious, I typed in wood state signs and you can get lots and lots of inspiration on the different types of, you know, wooden state signs, right? What people are doing and everything out there. We have created a, uh, an American flag sign, state pride sign, but I mean, you can go crazy with those, right? That's a little bit of laser engraving and CNC in there, right? Um, but um, so think about that. And so not only are you getting the benefits of kind of, you know, learning how to make this simple, very simple sign, it's rinse and repeat, uh, but you're going to uh, learn, you're gonna have all these vectors that you can make other things with. That's the important part and all that stuff and all. So. Um, uh, so great clocks, you know, and everything. Um, the God bless Texas. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. All right. Now, um, what I'd like to do as an homage to everything is I'd like to, it's nine o'clock. All right. So we've been going because of the cleanup of the vectors and everything we've been going for, uh, some time. Um, I would like you to see this design, just sit back, 
I'm not going to talk. Sit back and watch. I'd like you to see this design made in real time. Okay? So we're going to uh, save the changes to this, but we're going to create a blank new sign. And here we go. 38 by 20 and 5 16 by 3 quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to touch off on the surface of the material and start in the center. I'm going to import my flag vectors first. So we're going to go to my uh, US flag proportions. Get that imported in. I'm going to delete the flag that I don't want. And I'm going to center the flag that I do want. Now I'm going to import my state and this time I'll use a different state uh, so we're gonna go to the downloads folder and for this particular state I will do uh, let's do Kentucky we'll do Kentucky all right import Kentucky in there okay cool all right on this state, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the rectangular border, don't need it. I'm gonna take the state, and the state has this little island out here and everything. I'll keep that in this one. I'm gonna size it up to be a very big size that fits on the board. Uh, I want it to fit on my 30 and 3 eighths, but I wanna move it over and everything. And on this, I want to, uh, I'm going to be, you know, stars and stripes and everything. And because of the odd shape and all, uh, I'm going to try to get as many of the stars in as I can over here. But because the shape kind of angles down, I could rotate it uh, and stuff like that. But then it kind of th throws it off because when it's hung on the wall properly, like the state should sit, then it throws off and everything's at a lean. So I'm not going to lean anything. So that's that. Now I'm going to select, now that I've got my state sized and position, I'm going to select all of my stripes and remember my red stripes are still in this design so first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of those so I skip that step so every other stripe select 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 and I'm going to move those to a new layer called red stripes remember that every other stripes and I'm going to turn that layer off all right select my stripes select the stars that are in my shape deselect the stars that are not in the shape that one i've already decided on the points i'm not going to do the points so if it's a little point i'm going to get rid of it okay and then group g for group to group the stars and stripes together now, I'm going to clean up my state. Remember I showed you, um, remember I showed you that boundary and everything. Uh, I showed you how to clean up that boundary and all. Uh, I'm going to offset outward, offset inwards. I'm going to do it with no detail. So offset outward by 3 16 of an inch. Delete the original. Boom. Offset inward by 3 16 of an inch. Delete the original. Boom. Now I'm going to go back. I created a, a, some zero length spans by doing that. I'm going to go to vector validator and I'm going to search that selected. Actually, it did not. It cleaned up. So it's all clean. Now select my stars and stripes group. Select my state of Kentucky last and trim. Clearing outside of the boundary. Take while it's still selected, add my boundary to the selection. Now, you get too fast, you start forgetting things. There's one thing that I forgot. The 3, 1 32nd, not the 3, the 1 32nd offset. So undo control Z. Don't forget your offset for your trimming boundary. That is crucial and important. And I did. So I had to back up one step. Offset inward 1 32nd. Don't forget this step. Now I'm going to select my stars and stripes and that offset boundary last and trim. 
clearing outside of the boundary. Okay. Now select those two boundary lines and how I recognize it is because you're always selecting the two boundary lines to move your state out of the way and there was only one. That's how I knew that I forgot the boundary. Uh, but we're gonna delete that and then I'm gonna center that state back on the board. Align to center. So now <clears throat> I have a choice here. If I, I, I can carve this the full 38 inches you know, or I can scale it down to size and all that stuff. Let's again, let's assume that I'm sizing it down to a smaller project. Let's say I'm only carving uh, 22 inches. So 22 inches on the length. Uh, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to size this down to 22 on the length. And I'm going to go, uh, let's go 11 and a quarter. Let's say that this is um, roughly a, a 1 by 12 board. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to select my design, scale it down to fit on my board. Okay. Giving myself some room because remember I have an offset that's got to go outward. So let's do the offset now. Offset outward, 3 16 of an inch. That's my profile cut border. Okay. So let's size it down just a little bit more to get it on the board. Scale it just a little bit more. Okay. Now I am going to check that border because this border does have zero link spans. So let's do this. And there's one of them. There's only one. It's way up here at the top, but generally 99.9% .9 of the time, there's always going to be a zero link span. So we want to clear that out. Okay. That's it. I'm ready for tool pass now. Let's go over here and let's do our pocket cut. So our pocket cut, remember uh, trim boundary, I don't need it anymore. So I'll delete it or move it to another layer. In this case, I deleted it. Trim boundary, uh, recess boundary is going to be a pocket cut or a V carve cut. Your choice, totally up to you. Whichever one you want to do, I'll do it as a V carve since that's the last thing I showed you tonight. V carve tool path, starting at zero, cutting an eighth inch deep with a quarter inch and an eighth inch end mill and the 60 degree V bit. We're going to calculate that. All right, that'll be the recess. <clears throat> we'll, uh, let's skip the preview for now. We'll preview it all at the very end, but the recess is there. Now the next tool path is the stripes. Let's get the stripes. Even that one, don't forget that little guy right there. He's in there too. Make sure you don't miss a stripe. All right, all the stripes. Good job. All right, so the stripes are gonna be a V-carb tool path, starting at an eighth of an inch, cutting an eighth of an inch. Again, 60 degree V-bit. I'm gonna use a quarter and an eighth is fine. I'll name this stripes. Again, this is a fast version or just a normal operating version for me based on what you just learned in slow-mo, right? Okay, preview the visible tool path. I had someone in a class, I taught a live class the other day. Someone said, uh, man, that lesson you just taught, you know, uh, what you allotted uh, like 28 minutes for it. Why are your classes four hours long online? <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny. All right, now I've got some kind of anomaly happening right here. Let's see what's what and what is what. Uh, let's see what is what. Let's, oh, <laughs> I stopped the preview. We're not previewing yet. That's why it, that's, it's not an anomaly. It's because I didn't finish the preview on the first toolpath. All right, let's go back and let's do the stars now. Don't forget to get all those little points. If you have any of those little points in anything there. Uh, let's get those and I'm gonna leave these because they are part of this star. It kind of ties that together So we'll leave those but this is a V carved toolpath starting at an eighth of an inch. No flat depth No clearance tool just the 60 degree V bit. I like the stars going to their full depth stars 
calculate. All right, and uh, again, we're not ready for the stars for the preview and all that stuff. And then the final toolpath is the profile cutout. Profile cutout. I'm gonna start at zero, go three quarters if that's how thick your material is. Again, I'm using an eighth of an inch bit so I can get into these little nooks and crannies where I can. Uh, cutting on the outside of the line. I'm not gonna add any tabs for preview purposes, but you could add tabs to hold your material in place. Tabs, for those of you that are new, they're here. Um, add tabs to toolpath, and they are little pieces of wood that are left behind from the cut that keep the part being cut out connected to the main offcut of the material. Um, but we're not adding tabs for preview purposes. Calculate. Now I'm going to preview all the tool paths. So we have our pocket cut. And let me do this. Let me stop this. Uh, let me put all the bits together. So all of the quarter inch bits are going to go together. All the eighth inch bits are going to go together. And all of the V bits are going to go together. And then my profile cut is last. So let's preview the visible tool paths or all the tool paths. And at the end of this preview, we will say good night. Hey, Kool-Aid, thanks, man. I appreciate that super chat, bro. All right, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Hey, first one of the night, Kool-Aid. There you go, brother. I appreciate you. All right, there's the pocket cut for the quarter-inch end mill. Now the stripes quarter-inch end mill are cutting. Now the stripes quarter inch end mill are cutting. Now switching it up to the eighth inch end mill. The eighth inch end mill is going to go in and do the detail. And then the V bit is going to go do all the edge work. And then the stars. And then our quarter inch comes back, or eighth inch for me comes back and does the profile cutout. And there is the state of Kentucky. Now, just to add some color to it, again, uh, let's look at this in that pallet wood look, right? So if I had some reclaimed pallet wood, that would be pretty cool looking uh, and all. And again, would I color the stripes? I'm not sure. I don't know if I would uh, with the pallet wood. I might darken them so they stand out. I might use a stain or something. I don't know if I would paint them, but if it was, if it was a, uh, a solid wood, uh, you know, piece of material or something like, let's say cherry, I would add some color and what color that would be uh, probably would be um, bear with me a second. I had a weird anomaly with my color. Um, what probably would be for me would be um, the, what am I trying to say? The, uh, let me get the stars color in there. I'd probably paint them black or, you know, I might do other colors and all. But um, so there's the stripes and here's the stars. Okay. So that's kind of, you would see, you know, like if it was colored. Um, if uh, let's say that, uh, let's say I was doing a, you know, kind of an oak. Let's go with an oak, um, you know, kind of wood. I might paint the stars and the stripes so they stand out, you know. Uh, I might not, you know, I don't know. Uh, it really depends. I, I want them to pop, but if I'm using something like uh, some reclaimed wood that has some really cool detail to it or something, I may not add some color in there. But again, but again, I might add some color in there just to enhance the stripes so they stand out from that colorful wood, right? I don't know. That'll be up to you guys and girls for that. And with that being said, 
Uh, that is kind of real time on the state of Kentucky and it's rinse and repeat. All the other states would be the same way, right? All right. Y'all have a wonderful night. Mark, thanks for joining me. Mark Lindsay, thanks for joining me. I know you had to go uh, film your podcast, but hopefully uh, you have a good uh, podcast. And um, Dave Gatton, if you're still in the room, appreciate you. And uh, uh, Riley, everybody, thank you uh, very much. And I will have the all the state outlines and the two flags available for download. The download link will be available in the description of this video in about 45 minutes uh, to an hour. I got to create the link and you'll be good to go. All right, everybody. Until next time, I'll see you soon.